Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving another geometry puzzle. We do have two semicircles and an isosceles triangle that are inscribed in a quarter circle with radius one as shown. Find the area of the triangle. So this is a pretty interesting puzzle. Uh, we're going to be using a couple different tools here. As you know, uh, most of the puzzles, uh, maybe all of them, use the Pythagorean theorem. In addition to that, we're going to be using other tools for the solution as well. Okay, so at this point, you can just go ahead and pause and try the problem yourself first. All right, so we do have a quarter circle whose radius is given as one. And we do have two semicircles that are inscribed. So I'm going to go ahead and start by finding the radius of the smaller semicircle because I don't know that yet, right? So we don't know the radius. So let's go ahead and um, write these as one half and one half because uh, the radius of the quarter circle is one. That means the radius of the larger semicircle is one half, which is half of it. Okay, so let's go ahead and call this R. That's going to be R. And as you know, uh, to find that radius, we're going to be using the right triangles here. Okay, so let me go ahead and connect the centers, as we always do. That's going to help a lot, right? So let's see what we have here. We do have one right triangle. It's fairly simple. Uh, this length is R up to this point. And then this is one half. So the hypotenuse becomes one half plus R. And the height of this triangle is one half. Let me go ahead and write it in a nicer way. So the height of the triangle is one half. What about the base? Well, this is R, but we don't know this length, right? Up to this point, it's R. But we can actually use uh, inclusion, exclusion here. So the whole thing is one, because this is the radius of the quarter circle. If you take out R, if you subtract one from it, then this length is going to be one minus R. Okay, so that's our right triangle. Let's go ahead and write that down as an equation. We have one half squared plus one minus R squared. And that's equal to one half plus R squared. So this is basically Pythagorean theorem. Okay. Now we're going to find the radius of the smaller semicircle first, and then we'll use that to find the side length for the triangle. And notice that even though it looks like one, it's not an equilateral triangle. It is just an isosceles triangle. That's all we know. Okay. Now let's go on and expand this. This is going to be one fourth plus one minus two R plus R squared. This is going to be one fourth plus R because two times AB and then plus R squared. Okay. R squared cancels out. One fourth cancels out. Fairly simple, right? Put the R's on the same side. Three R equals one which means r equals one third. So this means that the radius of the smaller semicircle is one third. The larger one is one half, this one is one third. Okay, all right. Let's go ahead and use that information to find the side length for the, or the side lengths, I should say, because it's not equilateral, it's isosceles. Okay, so from now on, we're gonna be using some interesting tools, which is basically analytical geometry because Pythagorean theorem is not going to be very helpful here. I mean, at least to the best of my knowledge at this point, uh, you can definitely give it a try. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to connect the center of the smaller semicircle to the base of the triangle at the point of tangency. So where they're tangent, we're going to be getting a perpendicular segment here, right? Okay, awesome. Now, what do we know about the height of that segment or the length of that segment. Well, it's one third, right? Because it's just the radius. So this is equal to one third. So that's kind of nice because that's uh, the base of the triangle is parallel to the radius of the semicircle. So it's going to make a 90 degree angle with the uh, base as well. So we're going to use that uh, to our advantage. But first of all, we have to make more connections. So let me go ahead and connect one of the vertices of the triangle to the radius and do it on both sides. Okay. 
Now we're going to get two x values from here. So if I consider this to be uh, the origin, okay, so I'm kind of putting this on a coordinate system. That's how I'm going to use analytical geometry. And in geometry, actually, that's a very powerful method using analytical geometry to solve some geometry problems or geometry puzzles. So uh, let's go ahead and designate uh, some variables for these. Let's say, uh, let's call this one x1. Okay, let's call this one x1. And let's call this x2. So we have two x values. And obviously, there is a y value that corresponds to it. Now, one thing that's interesting is that the y values are going to be constant here. Because if you go out and extend the base, you're going to notice something here. Okay. We know that the radius of the smaller semicircle is one third, right? So this length would be one third then. Awesome. So what I know now is that this point has a y coordinate of one third and an x coordinate of x1. And the other point also has a y coordinate of one third and an x coordinate of x2. So my goal is to find x1 and x2. And then from there, I'm going to be able to calculate the base. And using the fact that this is isosceles, I'm going to be able to find the height of this triangle. Okay, so that's the plan. Let's go ahead and proceed. So how do I find x1? That's a good question, right? Well, we know that uh, the base of the triangle is on a horizontal line segment or line whose equation is given by y equals one third. So analytically, we do have the equation for the base of the triangle. Okay, so that's horizontal line. Now, here's the good uh, point. Where does that line intersect the semicircle and the quarter circle? Those are my points, right? X1 and X2 are the X coordinates of the points of intersection of the larger semicircle and the triangle and the quarter circle and the triangle. Okay. So let's go ahead and do the following. But what are the equations for these circles or semicircles or quarter circles, whatever they are? Okay. Well, the equations can be found because once we have our coordinate plane here, so this is the origin, right? The larger semicircle has a center of 0, 0,1 half. So let's go ahead and write it down. The center of the larger semicircle is 0, 0,1 half and its radius is 1 half. So from here, I can just go ahead and write the equation for the larger semicircle, which is this one. Okay, that's what I'm going to do now. Let's go ahead and write it down. If you use the circle equation x minus h, which is 0 squared, plus y minus k, which is y minus 1 half, squared is equal to r squared, and that's equal to 1 fourth. Now, at this point, you can just go ahead and simplify this a little bit. doesn't matter much, but let's do it. x squared plus y squared minus y plus 1 fourth, and then the one fourth is going to cancel out. Then I'm going to be getting a simpler equation. X squared plus Y squared minus Y is equal to zero. Okay, that's the equation of the larger semicircle. But what about it? What is so good about having that equation? Well, this point, this point here is the intersection point of the larger semicircle and the horizontal line. So what I can do is I can actually go ahead and solve them simultaneously which means that I have a system of equations, y equals one third and this one. Well, it's a simple system because I can just go ahead and replace y with one third. Let's go ahead and do that. And if I do from here, I'm, I'm going to get the x value. Well, if you write this as three ninths and subtract, that's going to make negative two ninths. And then if you add it to both sides, you'll get x squared equals two ninths. If you square root both sides, you're going to get x equals square root of 2 over 3. Obviously, we're not looking for a negative x value here because we know that it is to the right of 0. So in our coordinate system, x1 is positive. So this is x1, okay? So x1 is equal to root 2 over 3. By the same token, we can just go ahead and calculate x2, but x2 is the intersection point of the quarter circle and the horizontal line, which is given by y equals one third. What is the equation for the circle? Well, the center is at zero, zero, and its radius is one. So that's the unit circle, as you know, and unit circle has a really nice equation, which we use in trigonometry, right? X squared plus y squared equals one, intersect with y equals one third. Again, that's fairly simple. Substitute, 
replace y with one third and solve for x from here we get x squared equals eight ninths if you square it both sides and consider the positive solution you'll get two root two over three for x2 so i got x1 and x2 okay cool now what is good about having x1 and x2 and what does that have to do with the triangle and what does that have to do with the fact that the triangle is isosceles well we have a very nice triangle here even though it's not equilateral it's not the best but it's still pretty good because isosceles triangles actually have a good symmetry so what i can do is i can just go ahead and drop a perpendicular in in other words draw the height for the isosceles triangle let's go ahead and do that right now okay so I'm going to go ahead and drop that down here. Okay, so this is the height, and we know that the height is also the median, right? So this is going to be the midpoint of this point and that point, okay? Those large dots. Well, how do you find the midpoint if you know the x-coordinates and the y-coordinates are the same? So it doesn't really matter. We're just going to average the x-coordinates. So what I'm going to do is if I call that x0... I mean, I don't have to, but let's just call that x sub 0. And x 0 is just going to be the average of x1 and x2, right? Let's go ahead and calculate that. Well, x1 is root 2 over 3, and x2 is 2 root 2 over 3. And their sum is going to be root 2, and their average is going to be root 2 over 2. So that's basically the number in the middle, root 2 over 2. Now, how does that help me? solve the problem right well you might be asking okay well it's good to know that because now i can plug that in to the quarter circle and find the y value and then find the height of the triangle so let's call this h the height of the triangle i know the base of the triangle it's x2 minus x1 but i don't know the height yet so how am i going to find the height i'm going to replace x with x0 in the quarter circle equation and the quarter circle is, as you know, it's a unit circle. x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. And I'm going to replace x with root 2 over 2 here. Okay, to find y0. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. x0 is root 2 over 2. If you square that, you'll get 1 half. If you square root that and subtract 1, you're going to get y equals, or y squared equals 1 half. From here, you'll get y is equal to, or y0 is equal to root 2 over 2 as well. Okay, so the x-coordinates and the y-coordinates are the same here. Now, how does that help me find the height of the triangle? Well, we do know that the y-value here, the y-value here that we found as root 2 over 2. Let me go ahead and mark that real quick. Okay, so this is the length, right? This is root 2 over 2. Well, from that, if I subtract one third, right? Then I'll find the height of the triangle. So height of the triangle H, H is equal to root 2 over 2 minus 1 third. If you want to make a common denominator and just go ahead and do that, 3 root 2 minus 2 all over 6. So this is the height of my triangle. And I said the base, let's call that B. The base of the triangle is the distance between x1 and x2, so it's basically going to be x2 minus x1. We know that it's a positive difference. So it's going to be x2 minus x1. But x2 is 2 root 2 over 3, as you'll remember. x1 is root 2 over 3. Their, their difference will be, their difference will be root 2 over 3. So I got the base of the triangle and the height of the triangle. And I can find the area from here. Let's go ahead and plug it into the formula. Area is equal to... 1 half times base times height, which is 1 half times root 2 over 3, multiply by 3 root 2 minus 2 over 6. Okay, this could probably be simplified a little bit. Let's go ahead and see if that's possible. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and distribute the root 2 over here. That's going to give me 3 times 2, which is 6, minus 2 root 2, divided by 2 times 3 times 6, which is equal to 36. That's the area. And then area is going to be then, if you divide everything by 2, 3 minus 2 root 2, 3 minus root 2 divided by 18. That's going to be the area of the isosceles triangle. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment, like, and subscribe. 
and see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.